Hi, greetings. In the wonderful name of our Lord, Mashiach Yahushua, to our, our Father, Yahweh Elohim of hosts. Ab Adonai Yahweh held me a host. Tonight, we're going to be doing a sharing on the seven seals of the book of Revelation. Hey. And what uh, chapters are those, guys? Four, five, six, and seven. Four, yeah. four, six, four, four, five, and six. So before we begin, Leticia, we'll go ahead and start. I have a word of, of prayer of thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. Esther, would you like to do that? Mm -hmm. Thank you, I, for this wonderful day, Governess, and for, for this wonderful food, and for just letting us all come to have a wonderful time and just worship you. Amen. Amen. And so you know how to, Tim's our new cameraman, you know how to zoom in and make sure it's about like this. I'm gotcha. teaching. Yeah. Okay. He's got a little instruction. He's new at this. All right. So we'll begin with Revelations chapter 4. Just had the kids read 4, 5, and 6 because they learned a verse. Are you ready to do it? <laughs> Pardon me. Uh, who's, who's ready to do Revelation 5, 12, and 5? I do. Okay. Esther. Yeah. For he is aware that hath been slain to receive power and riches, and wisdom, and, uh, I mean, and might, and honor, and glory, and blessing. Lo, the land that is of the stripe of Judah, the root of David, hath overcome, to, op to open the scroll of the seven seed of therefore. Amen. That's it. And that's what we're talking about, is the seven seals. So we go to the book of Revelation, page 254, chapter 4. Now, what was that again? I'm sorry. Uh, chapter Revelation chapter 4. <coughs> the end of the book. Judgment Day. And we see the context, which is great. You know, everybody's got to read 4, 5, and 6. So much happens in 4, 5, and 6. But to begin with, this is about Yahweh. And also, all the way through the book of Revelation, you're going to see two entities. It's the Father and the Lamb. Very simply. Chapter 4 is all about the Father, and chapter 5 is all about the Lamb. So uh, we're not going to read it all, which we would. But if you look at 4, verse 1, After these things I saw, and lo, a door set open in heaven, and the first voice which I heard as of a trumpet speaking unto me, saying, Come up hither, and I will point out to thee the image which must needs come to uh, the things that which needs must come to pass. That's our introduction to chapter 4. Now we go to 8b. And... Holy, holy, holy is Yahweh of hosts, who was, who is, and who is coming. And whensoever the living creatures shall give glory and honor and thanksgiving unto him that sits upon the throne, unto him that liveth unto the age of ages, and who is that? Yahweh. The four and the twenty-four elders will fall down before him that sitteth upon the throne and do homage unto him that liveth unto the age of ages, and will cast their crowns before the throne, saying, Worthy art thou, O Yahweh our Elohim, to receive the power and the honor and the power. I mean, the glory and the honor and the power. Because thou did create all things, and by reason of thy will they were and were created. Now we go to 5. 1 through 5, Melania. And I saw upon the right hand of him that was sitting upon the throne a scroll written within and on the back sealed up with seven seals. And I saw a mighty messenger proclaiming with a loud voice, Who is worthy to open the scroll and the seven seals thereof? And no one was able in heaven or on earth or under the earth to open the scroll or to look thereon. I stop and there. This is so important. Nobody is, is able to open these scrolls except for one entity, and that is Yahushua, which is called the Lamb in here. And that is our, our position. So we must remember our position is 
In, in 1 Corinthians 3, 23, it says, All things are yours, and ye are Christ, and Christ is Yahweh's. That is the order. We are Christ. But who is Christ? Christ is Yahweh's. No, no. Apostrophe S. Yes. Yeah. Christ's. Mm -hmm. We are answerable to Christ, and Christ is answerable to Yahweh. That's the pyramid. That is the that is the order of things. And, and in and First Corinthians eleven three, it talks about the head of every man is Christ, and the head of Christ is who? Yahweh. Yahweh. So that is our order. So we are always Christ, and, and that's what will affirm this. And that's why he got it because he is worthy. Verse 4, And I began to weep much, because no one worthy was found to open the scroll or to look therein, thereon. And one of the elders said unto me, Do not weep. Go ahead, Melania. Quote that. Do not weep. Lo. The lion that is of the tribe of Judah, the root. the root of David, who has overcome to open the scroll and the seven seals thereof. That's right. So this is what the seven seals is all about. This is the scroll. Yahushua. This book of Revelation is a Hebrew book. It's not the church, so we're no part of this. It talks about synagogues. It talks about Jews, the, you know, the, the tribe of the 12 tribes, 144,000. So Bollinger did a great work on this, on the book of Revelation. If you ever want to know in depth, well, we're going to break this down so we can understand the scheme of things. And so the day of Yahweh, we're going to go to Isaiah chapter 2. And then we'll come back here for the seven seals. Page 649 in the Old Testament. Isaiah what? Chapter 2, verse 11. This is the first quotation of the day of Yahweh. It's not the day of the Lord. It's the day of Yahweh. So really, the Lord is paganism. That happened with the Septuagint and with Jewish uh, customs. So chapter 2, verse 11. Let me see here. The lofty looks of mean men shall be humbled, and the haughtiness of great men shall be bowed down. This is what it's all about. It's the haughtiness and the pride of man. And Yahweh alone shall be exalted in that day, for a day of Yahweh of hosts shall be. Everyone who is high and lofty, and upon everyone who is lifted up, and he shall be brought what? Low. 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 So this is, our position is always to be servants, to be brought low. Yahweh can lift us up, but when we lift ourselves up, or man lifts ourselves up, we are going to be brought low. When it comes down to, and that's really what's sad about Solomon. Because yeah. he, you know, he, now he served for 40 years, but obviously at some particular time, he was brought low by, the, by being high and lofty. Thirteen. And upon all, well, let's see here, yeah. And upon all the cedars of Lebanon that are high and lifted up, upon all the oaks of Bosham, this is all a relationship to men, being strong and mighty. So Jeremiah 9, 23 and 24 says what? Anybody? Thus saith Yahweh. Thus saith Yahweh, let not the wise man glory in his wisdom, neither let the mighty man glory in his might. Let not the rich man glory in his riches. But in this of the glorying one glory, and having intelligence and knowing me, that I am Yahweh, executing his said justice and righteousness in all the earth. Say Yahweh. That in these things I delight. Oh, that in these things I delight, sorry. Remember, it's not the mighty, it's not the wise, it's not the strength, and it's not the, the money. Those are the three things that, that will make you high and lofty and, and haughty. Mm -hmm. Is wisdom, brilliance, strength, you know, and, you know, that would be a boxer. You think of athletes, you know, LeBron James, or then money, where all of a sudden you're a multi-millionaire, billionaire, like uh, a lot of unbelievers. Warren Buffett, people like that. Bill Gates. It doesn't make any difference, because Yahweh looks at his said justice and righteousness. 
Those things delight. The other things doesn't do it. So this is what we're talking about. The, when you talk about the high trees, he's talking about man. Uh, the cedars of Lebanon? Yeah. See, the oaks of Bosham, 14, upon all the lofty mountains, upon all the uplift hills, upon every high tower, upon every fortress wall, everything is high. And upon all the ships of Tarshish, and upon all the desirable banners, and the haughtiness of mean men shall be what? Humbled. Humbled. And the lowliness of great men shall be laid low, and Yahweh alone shall be exalted in that day. So they are exalting themselves over Yahweh. And the idols shall wholly pass away, and they shall enter into the holes of the rock and into the caves of clay because of the terribleness of Yahweh. This is the book of Revelation. And for his majestic splendor when he arises to shake terribly the earth, which we're going to see. That is the seventh uh, bowl. The seventh what? Bowl. And so we're looking at seven seals. The seven seals, we're going to, we're going to find out the this first six seals go off in one chapter, chapter six. What happened to the seventh seal? Well, the seventh seal is broken into two categories. Seven trumpets and then seven bowls. So it's actually 14 on one seal. And the last is the earthquake. An earthquake that's never been like anything ever occurred on the earth. And mountains are going to be leveled. You know, islands are going to be gone. You know, so, and that's right here. And because of the terribleness of Yahweh and for his ma uh, majestic splendor, when he arises and shakes terribly the earth. Wow. I'm glad I'm not going to be here. If Yahweh says shaking terribly, is going to be shaking. Yes, it is going to be. And why? Because of the haughty men. Now we go to 13 one of Isaiah. <clears throat> this is about Babylon. So what we're going to see about this time frame is two cities, Jerusalem and Babylon. And this is the oracle on Babylon of which Isaiah, son of Amos, had vision. And Babylon exists today, so when we look at the, the book of Revelation, the day of Yahweh is going to be in the Middle East. These, the, you know, Babylon is in what state or nation? Iraq. It's in, it's in Iraq. That's where Nebuchadnezzar was. And it was a beautiful city because they called it the seventh wonder of the world, yeah. the Hanging, Hanging Gardens of uh, Babylon. I thought that was and Jerusalem, Jerusalem, which we're going to find out too, was a very beautiful city, the city of all. And both of them are carried on all the way through till the end. So the, the thing that's not going to happen in the United States is happening in the Middle East. And 13, that's, so this is showing you we're talking about Babylon. And go to verse 6. 13. Now, let's see if I, I might, yeah. That's going to be a little long. Well, I don't think I'm even going to go there. We don't have really the time. But we go through verse 6 through 19. It tells you all about what's happening to Babylon. Let me see if we can just sum it up. <clears throat> let's go to verse 19 only. We've got a lot of reading to do. <laughs> Elijah, you want to read 19? Okay. <clears throat> Thus shall Babylon, the most lovely kingdoms, the majestic beauty of the Chaldees, become as in the divine overthrow of Sodom and Gomorrah. There you go. That's, that's what, and actually, is, and I, don't, I haven't checked this out, but supposedly Sodom Hussein rebuilt Babylon. So Babylon has mm -hmm. been destroyed, so has Jerusalem was destroyed. Jerusalem was rebuilt. And so is Babylon being rebuilt. It's interesting. He calls it the divine overthrow. Yeah. Yeah. And we always see Sodom in association with this. And we go to Revelation 18. We'll see a little bit about Babylon in the end of the book. Page 263. Esther, come and get a Bible. Come on. How are you going to read if you don't have a Bible? Page so we're going to say uh, 2B. And when I say 2B, that means the bottom part of the verse. So 2A is the first part of the verse. 
2B is the bottom. So we're going to go right into 2B. Fallen, fallen is Babylon the Great. And it hath become a habitation of what? Demons. Demons. And a, a prison of every impure spirit and a prison of every impure and hated bird. <laughs> Because by reason of the wine of thy wrath, of her lewdness, have all the nations fallen, and the kings of the earth will bid will, with, her. with her did commit lewdness. And the merchants of the earth, by reason of the a power of her wantonness, waxed rich. So we can see Babylon is talking about in Isaiah, and all of a sudden it's going to be at the end of the story too. And it's going to be the last thing that's going to end up falling. And remember, now we're going to go to Jerusalem. <coughs> is the is the mic on? It shows off on this thing here. So yeah, it's on. Okay, and okay. We, I'm sorry. We start, I didn't no, know. that's good. I think it's, it's talking about the exterior. Okay. I mean the interior. I just want to make sure I'm like, in yeah. case I noticed that. I'm like, sorry. And the scale is going back and forth when I talk. Mm -hmm. It is. Yeah, that's okay. it. Yeah, it does say that. Now we're going to Jerusalem, and it's so sad because Jerusalem is the city of David. Mm-hmm. Is, this is Zion, which is the future habitation of Yahweh and of Christ. And, and, and it's in the day of, of Yahweh. Day just like along with Babylon. Yeah. And they're both called Sodom. Jerusalem wow. is called Sodom, so is Babylon. So let's go to Ezekiel, chapter 16, page 799. That's it. What page? 799. And you are old. Old. Ezekiel. Old Testament. There's a whole chapter. That's a big chapter. <coughs> when do you want to read just the heading of chapter 16? Jerusalem's infidelity under the figure of an adulteress is graphically portrayed. This is, this is Jerusalem, and people talk about, oh, Jerusalem, everything's going to be just fine. No, it's not that way. And we've seen it has been great in the splendor of Solomon, and we've seen it in the devastation with, with the king of Manassas. Uh, the ki king Manassas. Read 1 and 2. And the word of Yahweh came unto me, saying, Son of man, let Jerusalem know her abominations. And then it portrays Jerusalem as a woman, as a baby who's been thrown out, nobody wants, it's, it's gagging in his blood, it's naked, uh, everybody's walking by it. And Yahweh, this is what this whole chapter is about, Yahweh ends up taking in Jerusalem, cutting the navel cord, you know, clothing her, washing it off, washing off the baby, endowing her with gowns as, as a female, and Jerusalem is feminine in the Hebrew. Endowing her and, and making her great, and then what happens is in 14, then went forth thy fame among the nations for thy what? Beauty. beauty. Remember the beauty of Babylon also. For perfect it was in my splendor, which I have put upon thee, declares my Lord Yahweh. <coughs> there is the beauty of it. And you can read this whole chapter. Now, let's look at verse 35. And what's that say, Isaiah? Therefore, O harlot, hear harlot. the word. Therefore, O harlot, hear the word of Yahweh. Wow. Oh, God. This is Jerusalem. Yeah, you know, a harlot is not a good word. A harlot is not even a prostitute. So it's somebody who has does sexual uh, sins without even being paid for it. So a prostitute got paid for it, while a harlot does not. And he calls Jerusalem a harlot. And this is the woman that he reconstructed, Yahweh did, which was his Jerusalem. Now we go to verse 48. And... As I live, declares my Lord Yahweh, verily Sodom, thy sister, have not done, neither she nor her daughters, as thou and thy daughters have done. That was Samaria, the northern kingdom, which they're already gone, because they were taken away with the king of Assyria 150 years before Jerusalem fell, or Judah fell, and he says, you're worse than your sister Sodom, and that is Jerusalem. So we have to remember that's in there. And let's go to Luke chapter 21, page 85 in the New Testament. A little bit more about Jerusalem. It 
So the church many times is proclaiming Jerusalem as the peace of Jerusalem and, and on and on. But right now, Jerusalem is filled with Antichrist. And there's two classifications. You know, if you, if, if you deny Yahushua as being the Lord, Savior, you're Antichrist. You also deny the Father. So who denies Yahushua as the being Jews. the Messiah? The Jews. And who else denies him as being the Messiah? The Islam. Islam. And both of them occupy Jerusalem. <coughs> now there are Christians there too, but you got to remember, these it's full of Antichrist. What chapter? And you might, uh, set, uh, let me see here, chapter 21. And you might like it for the, the uh, historical aspects with the ground, but we've got to realize that is Jerusalem. So we go to verse 5, and here's Yahushua talking about the same place. Remember, he said, Yahushua said, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, ye that slay the prophets. Yeah. So we saw that from last teaching. And certain saying of the temple, with a beautiful stone and offering hath it been adorned. And he said, As to these things which you are looking upon, there shall come days in which there will not be left here stone upon stone, which will not be taken down. So Yahushua is knowing the, the outcome of Jerusalem, which it, it was rebuilt. Now we go to uh, Revelation chapter 11. So about Jerusalem. So we, were, we see Jerusalem and, and Babylon in Revelation. Chapter 11, verse 7. Page 258. Good. That's right. We're going to go to 259 and read 7 through 13. Let's see here. And when do you want to read 7 through 13? And as soon as they have completed their witnessing, the now we're talking, oh, excuse me, that's the two witnesses. Proceed. This one we sing about. Mm -hmm. And as soon as they have completed their witnessing, the wild beast that is to come up out of the abyss will make war with them and overcome them and slay them. And their dead bodies lie upon the broadway of the great city, the which is called spiritually Sodom and Egypt, where their Lord also was crucified. Oh, I know. Where was Christ crucified? Jerusalem. Right. So he's calling it Sodom and Egypt, is Jerusalem. Now look at this. We call it Sodom, so it's not literally Sodom. And we call it Egypt, it's not literally Egypt, because where their Lord also was crucified. So he's calling Jerusalem, Sodom, and Egypt. That's where the, the you know, that, that's where the last end times of the two witnesses are going to be killed, is in Jerusalem. And now go on to nine. And some of the peoples and tribes and tongues and nations see their dead bodies three days and a half. And their dead bodies do they not suffer to put into a tomb. And they who are dwelling upon the earth rejoice over them and make merry. And gifts will they send to one another because these two prophets tormented them that were dwelling upon the earth. And after the three days and a half, a spirit of life from Yahweh entered in within them, and they stood upon their feet, and great fear fell upon them who were beholding them. And they heard a loud voice out of heaven saying unto them, Come up hither. And they went up into heaven in the cloud, and their enemies beheld them. And in that hour there came to be a great earthquake, and the tenth of the city fell. And there were slain in the earthquake names of men, seven thousand. And the rest became greatly afraid and gave glory unto the God of, the heaven, of heaven. So that's Jerusalem in this time period. People rejoiced and wouldn't bury the prophets. That's how bad it is. <clears throat> now, let's go to the seven seals. And let's go back to chapter 5 of Revelation. Well, you kids need to understand, we won't be here. Yeah, we won't be here. Happen. When Christ comes back, we're not Jew or Gentile. We're the church of, of Yahweh, or the assembly of Yahweh. And we're going to be taken up to be with Christ. Just like Noah, or not Noah, yeah, Noah was taken up above the flood. And also was um, a lot taken out of uh, Sodom and Gomorrah. 
And that's how Egypt was taken out of, or not Egypt, but the Israelites were taken out of Egypt. So when Yahweh is about ready to do judgment, the righteous he pulls out. And so we're going to be in the clouds, and we'll probably be helped fulfilling a lot of this um, uh, judgment. And then we have, must ask ourselves, there are different judgments that we've seen. We see the world within was, and this is Genesis 1-2, it overflowed with water. That's going to Second Peter. So we know that creation was done away with. And we know the fossils today, what they are. We know that Noah went through this. And that was a total judgment. And there appears to be no warning, well, it, uh, according to the scriptures. So that all the world, instead of giving chances, was just wiped out. And Noah and, and his uh, wife and kids were saved. <coughs> Sodom was completely destroyed. That was a total annihilation. And only Lot and his daughters were saved. <clears throat> Egypt was judged. And we had ten plagues that went upon Egypt. Israel was brought out. So at least the Egyptian had a chance not to go through this. And so when Yahweh is giving people his chances, there's some people who are going to change before uh, before they're wiped out. So they're, they have a change of heart. So that's why we do it. If nobody is going to change, if they're all evil, just mow it all down. There's no purpose to it. But he's doing this to get people's attention. Have you ever had a parent give you attention? <laughs> when you were doing something wrong and all of a sudden they brought the hammer down and they made life very uncomfortable. And it says either do things the right way if you keep doing the things the wrong way, this is what's going to happen. That's what it is. <clears throat> and so even when they saw the two witnesses go up into heaven, they should. some people are going to change and say, we, I was wrong. Mm -hmm. These people really were working for Yahweh. And I'm sorry, Yahweh. And they're still going to go through the tribulation, but at least they're going to be in the new earth with Christ because they'll get salvation <laughs> that way. Oh, and then we have the Assyrian army's judgment. And that was against Hezekiah where he mocked Yahweh, and 185,000 were killed in one night. So that's selective. You know, that's, that's a plague. Boom. Any, any warning? <laughs> hey, you guys. And boom, 185,000 are dead. And then we saw Israel judge the ten tribes, taken away to Assyria. Judah judge the two tribes they were taken away to Assyria. So keep that in mind. Now we get to the seven seals. And we're going to look at the Lamb right now in chapter 5, verse 6 to 12. And, uh, and I saw in the midst of the throne and of the four living creatures. Remember, <laughs> where we left off and, and when we began this is Yahweh sitting on the throne with a scroll. And it says, who can take this scroll? And people were weeping and he said, no, it is the line of the tribe of Judah. He can take, but he hasn't taken the scroll yet. Now he's about ready to take the scroll out of Yahweh's hand. So this is Father and Son. Verse 6, And I saw in the midst of the throne and of the four living creatures and in the midst of the elders a lamb. So it doesn't call him Yahushua. This is really neat. A lamb. Standing, showing it had been slain. Yeah. And you see the word it? Okay, most people are going to change that. But that's what the gender is. That's what they call neuter. Because a lamb, do we know if a lamb's male or female? Yeah. What is it? Well, no. No, we don't know. It's like saying child. Is a child male or female? Or a no. cat. It's no. called neuter. And a child is neuter because you don't know. If it's a male child, a male is, is masculine, female is feminine. But when you say child, you haven't, de you haven't determined the sex. Well, that's the faithfulness of the Rotherham. It had been slain, having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the, the seven ruachs of Yahweh sent forth into all the earth. And he came and at once took it. Took what? The scroll. And now he has a, a, a gender. Out of the right hand of him that was sitting upon the throne. Who's going to open up this can of whoop-ass? What do we call it? <laughs> can of whoop-ass. <laughs> Yeah, the lamb is. And what's his name? Yahushua. Yahushua. So you think he's a nice guy that rides around on a donkey all day. This time he's coming back on a white horse. And he's still with love to get those who are changed to change. But these are the people that you have to put in prison 
you know, there are some people who have to do, they've done such bad things, they have to almost die, be tortured, be put in prison, and then they see the light. You know, glad we're not there. But there are people out there. And the Apostle Paul was one of those people, really. He had to be cracked over the head and blinded for three days, you know, to get his attention. Is that a, a timeout by Yahweh? Yeah. By Christ? <laughs> timeout. Boom! So Esther's blind and on the ground, and you know, your eyes are open and you can't see anything. Why don't you go think about this while... I'll, I'll let you know when you can see again. And then you're Yo. you're waiting and you're waiting time and time. I you can't see my watch. Can't see watch. Okay. Eight. And when he took the scroll, the four living creatures and the four and twenty elders. There's a whole creation here that we don't even know about. Twenty-four elders, the four creatures who say, "Holy, holy, holy." That we don't even know. Yeah. I just fell down before the Lamb, having each one a harp and bowls <coughs> of gold full of incense, which are the prayers of the saints. That's our prayers. And they sang a new song, saying, Worthy art thou to take the scroll and to open the seals thereof, because thou wert slain, and didst redeem unto Yahweh by thy blood men of every tribe and tongue and people and nation, and didst make them unto our God, a kingdom and priest, and they reign on the earth. And I saw and I heard a voice of many messengers round about the throne and the living creatures and the elders, and the number of them was myriads of myriads and thousands of thousands, saying with a loud voice, well, isn't that going to be great? Because we're going to be part of that sometime. Yeah. No more of this corruption is in the world. Everybody's singing the praises of Yahweh and the Lamb. Worthy is the Lamb that hath been slain, your verse, that hath been slain, to receive the power and riches and wisdom and might and honor and glory and blessing. And every created thing which is in heaven and upon the earth and under the earth and upon the sea and all the things in them heard I saying, unto him that sits upon the throne, which is Yahweh, and unto the Lamb, Yahushua. Right, that's Yahushua, be the blessing and the honor and the glory and the dominion unto the age of ages and the four living creatures continuing saying what? Amen. 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 And the elders fell down and did homage. Isn't that great? What a what a send off. And that's what now? Start opening the scroll. Let's see if we got time. Okay, we're gonna come up with the six seals. And so, Esther, you read the first seal to be opened. So start on verse one. Oh wait a minute, let me let me do this handout. So this is the events. One for each of you up. Yeah, I can do this. Okay. There you go, Matt. This is on our website. Under the book of Revelation, if a person wants this. Yeah. You got one? Okay. Okay. There you go. So we're not going to read all of them. We're going to read the first six, and then we'll, we'll sh see how this is broken down. Okay, proceed. So Esther, you're going to read uh, six one and uh, two. Okay. Go ahead. And I saw the lamb open one of the seven seals, and I heard one of the four living creatures saying, as with the voice of thunder, go. And I saw lo, a white horse. If he that was sitting therein, holding a bow, they were given to him a crown, and he went forth conquering, conquering that he might conquer. All right. And what people say about him being on a white horse is probably a false prophet. He looks like a good guy. Because good guys are on white horses. <coughs> and he's not, because he's conquering. Okay, Melania, two. Second seal. Okay. And I saw, wait, no, verse, no three. I, verse 3, sorry. And when he opened the second seal, I heard the second living creature saying, Go! And there went forth another, a red horse. <coughs> and unto him that was sitting thereon, it was given unto him to take away peace from the earth, and that one another they should slay. 
and there was given unto him a great sword, and when he okay, opened... Let's stop there. That's the second seal. Number five. That's the, the third seal. Go ahead, Isaiah. And when he opened the third seal, I heard the third living creature saying, Go. And lo, I, and I saw lo, a black horse, and he was sitting there um, holding a pair of balances in his hand. And I heard him mention the four living creatures saying, A quart of wheat for denarii. Denarii. Three quarts of barley for denarii. And the, the oil and the wine didn't do did all. So this black horse is a famine. So denarii is a day's wages. And so you work for a day, and what do you get? You get a quart of oatmeal. Mm -hmm. That's your wages. So that means there's famine. <clears throat> That's the third one. Okay, Elijah, the fourth one, chapter or verse 7. <clears throat> and when he opened the fourth seal, I heard a voice <laughs> of the fourth living creature saying, Go! And I saw, and lo, a livid horse, that he was sitting whereupon had a name, Death, and Hades had followed with him, and there was given unto them authority over the force of the earth to <coughs> slay with sword, with famine, and with death, and by the wild beasts of the earth. Wow, yeah, that's 25% fourth of the earth dead. We're talking about billions of people. <clears throat> what do you want to do, nine, the fifth seal? And when he opened the fifth seal, I saw beneath the altar the souls of them who had been slain because of the word of Yahweh and because of the witness which they held. And they cried out with a loud voice, saying, How long, O Sovereign, the Holy and True, dost thou not vindicate and avenge our blood from them that dwell upon the earth? And there was given to them, each one, a white robe, and it was bidden them that they should rest yet a little while, until the number should be made full of their fellow servants also and their brethren, who were about to be slain as even they. Now we go to the sixth seal. And I saw... When he opened the sixth seal, that a great earthquake took place. This is very important because the, the last event is going to be the earthquake of all earthquakes. Took place, and the sun, which became black as sackcloth of air, and the full moon became as blood, and the stars of heaven fell to the earth as a fig tree shedding her winter fruit. Then by a great wind it is shaken, and the heaven was withdrawn as a scroll rolling itself up. And every mountain and island out of their places were shaken. And the kings of the earth and the great men and the rulers. Now, remember the haughty men, the high-minded, the oaks of Basham, the high towers? Here they are. And the kings of the earth, are you high up? Yeah, you're a king. And the great men, are you high up? You're the great men. And the rulers of thousands, are you high up? Yeah. And the rich, are you, are you high up? Yeah. And the mighty, remember? You know, let not the wise man glory in his wisdom, neither let the mighty man glory in his might. Let not the rich man glory in his riches. Here's, here they all are. So whenever you get rich or mighty or great wisdom, keep humble. And the rich and the mighty and every bondman and freedman hid him, themselves within the caves and within the rocks of the mountains. And they said unto the mountains and unto the rocks, Fall upon us and hide us from the face of him. Why would you want to hide from the face? Because we know in uh, Psalms uh, 34, 15, and 16, the eyes of Yahweh, the face of Yahweh is against the such as do be cut off from the earth from their memory. The face of Yahweh is against such as do wickedness. Look what happened here. Fall upon us and hide us from the face of of him that sent us upon the throne and from the anger of what? The lamb. the lamb. Because the great day of their anger is come and who is able to stand? Okay, now where's the seventh seal? We, we saw the sixth seal. But if you look at this page, you'll see the seventh seal, it will be Chapter 7 is a parenthetical phrase. Explain that. <clears throat> a parenthesis, which means it's going to explain some things before or after, so we, we've, we cut off our discussion. And so you should ask yourself, and it's all of seven. So 
it, it doesn't say anything about the seven seal. We were so in chapter six, we did six of the seven seals. But what happened to the seven seal? Aha. Now we go to chapter eight. Verse one. So when we're reading Revelation, remember seven is, is a parathetical phrase. Now we get back to it, as soon as he opened the seventh seal, that's where, where six left off, there came to be silence in heaven as it were half an hour. You know, Can you that, imagine how silent that yeah, would be? Yeah, and you're like, after the earthquake and everything else, everything is just... Because guess what? There's 14 more coming. Yeah, yeah you, you just went through six. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that scared that pants out. You're hiding in the mountains, but guess what? There's 14 more coming. And I thought, you know, so that silence, you know, before the storm. And do I have your attention? Have you repented? Okay, let's go to, keep your finger here. Let's go to 14 of Revelation. And here's the purpose 14, verse 6. <clears throat> And seven. This is the whole purpose of, of what parents do, what policemen do, what governments do when people are doing things wrong. <coughs> and I saw another messenger flying in mid heaven, having an age abiding glad message to announce unto him who are dwelling upon the earth even unto every nation and tribe and tongue and people, saying with a loud voice, Melania, Fear Yahweh and give him glory because the hour of his judgment is come and do homage unto him that made the heaven and the earth and the sea and the fountains of waters. That's it. Very simple. All it comes down to is fear Yahweh. Give him glory. <laughs> the Democratic Party fear Yahweh? They don't fear Yahweh whatsoever. They, they spit on Yahweh. And do the communists fear Yahweh? They spit on Yahweh. The socialists uh, fear Yahweh? No, they spit on Yahweh. This is the message. And, and now it's come to fruition. And with all of our lives, when a parent is trying to uh, discipline you, that's what it is. Do what Yahweh wants. Or, or, you're, or we're going to make life very difficult for you. And how difficult is the, it's determined by who? Yahweh. You. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You know, somebody's got their arm behind their back. Uncle, no, no, it's going to happen. It's going a little bit higher. Uncle, no. <laughs> oh, uncle, 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 uncle. Okay. Catch your attention? Okay. No. We'll ask questions later. Okay. But that's eight. And so this is the seventh seal. And we'll go, let me see if I got enough time. Yeah. Verse 2, And I saw the seven messengers which before Yahweh do stand, and there was given unto them, what? Seven, seven trumpets. Seven trumpets. So that, remember, if you look at this chart, you'll see the seven seal, seven seal breaks into seven trumpets, and then into seven bowls. So we've got 14 more things happening. Now we're talking about the seven trumpets. And another messenger came and took his stand at the altar, having a censer of gold, and there was given unto him much incense, that he might give it unto the prayers of all the saints upon the altar of gold that is before the throne. And the smoke of the incense went up with the prayers of the saints out of the hand of the messenger before Yahweh. And so always remember your prayers are like incense. You ever smell incense and something smells really good? And that's your prayers, and that's what Yahweh smells when you have a good heart and praying. And the messenger at once took the censer and filled it from the fire of the altar and cast unto the earth. And there came to be thunders. Now remember, a half Thunder hour of silence. Thunders and light voices. And this is great. You know, that and lightning and an earthquake. Another earthquake. And that's all. You're not reading it that way. That's plural. Thunderings. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Plural. Voices, voices and, and lightnings and an earthquake. And the seven messengers who had the seven trumpets prepared themselves that they might sound. Here we go. <clears throat> and we see in verse 7, and the first sounded. <coughs> so if you look at our chart, the trumpet. The first sounded. What happened? Elijah. Fire. Uh, first trumpet, you said? Yeah. Uh, third of the earth burned. Okay, second trumpet, Isaiah. 
the sea. The sea. I thought the, the sea was destroyed. Third trumpet, Melania. The rivers. A third. You see the third? A third of the rivers were, was destroyed. The fourth trumpet, uh, Esther. What of the third sun? The sun and moon were not shining. Uh, fifth, Wendy. I don't know where you are. The trumpet. The fifth trumpet. No, no. Um, I'm, I'm sure. Oh, sorry. Open abyss. And the sixth trumpet is what, Melania? One third killed. Oh, wait a minute. Let's look at the fourth seal. How many were killed? Fourth. I've already been dead. Quarter. So now think of that. So if you have a hundred and a fourth is gone, how many do you have now? Seventy-five. Okay. Now if you take a third of seventy-five, how much do you have left? Fifty. Fifty. So out of a hundred, how many people are dead so far? Fifty. Fifty. Half. Fifty percent. Half. So now we went a quarter into a third, which means now a half of the population is dead. Okay, the seventh trumpet is, let's go to 11.5, chapter 11. Now we're going to see, yeah, 11.15, I'm sorry. 11.15, chapter 11 is all about the two witnesses. And they're really going to be acting as Elijah did back in the days of Jerusalem. And guess where? He is. He's in Jerusalem. And how did, how did it go for John the Baptist in Jerusalem? How did it go for Christ in Jerusalem? Yeah. So you got to remember, that's Jerusalem. And that is the holy place. This is the city of David, Yahweh's future abode, that's been hijacked. Mm -hmm. But yet, Yahweh's going to win. He's, he's going to clean up Jerusalem. 15, And the seventh messenger sounded, and there came to be a loud voice in heaven, saying, The kingdom of the world hath become the kingdom of our Lord and of his Christ, and he shall reign unto the age of ages. Now, if we look at that, we're going to see what's going to happen out of the seven trumpets. We're going to get seven bowls. Let me see. Uh, you got a handwriting on there? On any of those? Yeah. On the left handwriting? Seven bowls, 15 through 17. Okay. Seven, I mean. Yep. It's chapter, oh, 15, verse 8? Seven. Seven, okay. Now, let me go here. So they bring up the seventh trumpet on 1115. That's what it says. The seventh messenger sounded. There's the seventh trumpet. Now we're going to see another parathetical phrase from chapter 12, as you can see here, on the, on the sheet over here, from 12 to 15, all, all of chapter 15. So 15, 12 is parathetical, 13, 14, and 15. Because you have to say, well, where are the seven bulls? And if you look at 15, uh, 7, we start resuming again. Chapter 15. Chapter 15, 7. And one of the four living creatures gave unto the seven messengers seven golden bowls of what? Isaiah? Bowl of the wrath of Yahweh. Ow. Ooh. They're golden, though. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> seven golden bowls of the wrath of Yahweh who liveth unto the age of ages. And the sanctuary was filled with smoke by reason of the glory of Yahweh, by reason of his power, and no one was able to enter into the sanctuary until the seven plagues of the seven messengers should be ended. So there's a time out where all of a sudden, now you thought that was bad. We got seven more coming. That's like the plague. And Yahweh ancient. closes it off because people still haven't repented. And, and uh, we're going to see that. And so we see it, the, the first bowl comes out in chapter 16, verse 2. And read the first bowl, Melania. And well, let's first, read 1 and 2. And I heard a loud voice out of the sanctuary saying unto the seven messengers, Go and be pouring <laughs> out the seven bowls of the wrath of Yahweh onto the earth. You have to say, what was that other stuff? 
<laughs> that's not the ref. That was the appetizer. <laughs> yeah, that was an appetizer. Seven trauma. One half of the world's dead, and that wasn't the raft. No, this is the good stuff. We say that for last. Yeah, yeah. That, that was the breadsticks. Here, here's the here's the, the second show. Verse two. Here's the main course. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Here's the main course. That, those were just uh, breadsticks. Because uh, Babylon is still alive. All right, so what happened? Babylon and Jerusalem are probably still existing. Oh, yeah, we got to finish these guys off. Uh, Two. And the first departed and poured out his bowl onto the earth. And there came to be a... Baneful. Baneful and painful ulcer upon the men who had the mark of the beast and who were doing homage unto, unto his image. Oh, so if you did take the mark, you're okay? What? If they don't did. know what the mark is. Remember, we had a fellowship where they yeah. were marked. If, if you wanted to buy things, you had to get the mark of the beast, the 666. It had to be on your hand or your forehead. And Yahweh says, if you take that mark, you're going to get it. And if you don't take the mark, you're going to get it from the, you're going to get it from the false prophet. Now, who is really going to get it from? <coughs> Yahweh or the false prophet? Yeah. Yeah. No, I don't want to get I'd rather get it from the false prophet. And the beast, because he's gonna make my life miserable. Because he's, he's gonna, running he'll, everything. He'll kill me. Yeah. I want so you you can't come to the store. You can't buy things. You know you can't go to restaurants. You can't do anything because you're hunted. Because you're you won't take the mark of the beast. So that's gonna be the consequence. All right. And we might even kill your family if you don't take the mark of the beast. What are you gonna do? And Yahweh says, don't do it. Because they can kill me. And that's not the end. Because I'm going to be resurrected and live in a, I'm going to live with Yahweh and Christ the rest of my life. Or I can take the mark of the beast <clears> and, and you know what's going to happen to me now? Yes. I'm going to die, because it says if you took the mark of the beast, you're not going to live in paradise, ever. No six, and six, 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 six and for you guys. The, the things start coming now because this, this sores that are on them are the people who have the mark of the beast. And that, does that remind you of Egypt with uh, Moses? And did, remember the guys who the sorcerers, did they get uh, sores? Yeah, they got sores, and they call it the finger of God. Okay, now we go to <coughs> painful ulcers on the mark of the beast. Okay, number two, Isaiah. What's going to happen? On, on the second bowl. Verse three. Yeah. No, just look on your sheet. Sorry. So we're going to go. We can't read all these. We're running out of time. Second bowls. Ye of blood. The sea of blood all died. All died. I, Elijah. Three. Yeah. Uh, river blood. Okay. Wendy. Sun scorches mankind. It's, I, that sunscreen ain't going to happen. <laughs> it's not going to make any better. Yeah. Okay, six. I mean, five. Esther. Esther. Throw the beast. Throw the beast. Number six, Euphrates dries up Armageddon. This is the big war. Now we're going to go to seven. This is the last bowl. This is the big one. Remember, right below you'll see 16 <coughs> verse 17. The Super Bowl. Yeah, this. Yeah, yeah this. Super Bowl. <laughs> that is, that's a good point. 16 verse 17. And this is the finale. And if you look on this page, 17 through 19 are parenthetical again. They're actually explaining what happened in, in this, the seven bowls. This, and the seven uh, poured out his bowl upon the air. And, and there came forth a loud voice out of the sanctuary from the throne saying, Accomplished. And there came to be lightnings and voices and thunders and a great earthquake, now listen to this one, took place such as never taken place since <coughs> man came to be on the earth. Such a mighty earthquake, so great. You know, when, when Yahweh says great, yeah. Yeah. It, it's going to be, it's going to be. Sh and, and, the city, and the great city became divided into three parts, and the cities of the nations fell. And guess what happened? And Babylon the great was brought into remembrance before Yahweh to give unto her, the, it's time to pay her back, the cup of the wine of the raft of his anger, 
and every island fled, and mountains were not found, and great hail, as talons, a, a talon is 100 pounds, coming down on you, coming down out of heaven upon mankind, and men, no, instead of repenting, what, what did men do, Elijah? They blaspheme Yahweh. Read that, Elijah. And men blaspheme Yahweh by reason of the plague of hail, because the plague thereof was exceeding great. That's it. Even these guys, right to the end, blaspheme Yahweh, the Creator, who made them, who, who, gave, who breathed life into them. No different than, than Yahweh going to Israel, and she's born in blood, and she's a baby, and her cord's not cut, and, and he dresses her all up, all right, and makes her beautiful, gives her earrings and, and everything, and she's formed, and then she becomes a harlot and rejects Yahweh and goes after the nations. And that's what and that's happens all here. a figure of speech. Yeah, that's a that figure of speech. Obviously. But it, it paints a picture. All right, right. And let's see here. I think that's it. Um, and now I'm now. You can go to sleep. Ah. And don't have any nightmares. <laughs> but that way you can read the book of Revelation. Yeah. And that's the end of the story, and we're not part of it. So you ought to yeah. tell people, this could happen tomorrow. We'd be taken up. And anybody who had not was not a Christian is going to stay behind. You want to avoid that? Yeah. yeah. yeah I tell people, and they need to know that because but you're not you going to avoid it. If, 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 you, if you haven't made Christ your Lord, uh, you, you're going to be here. You can still come, uh, but you're going to have to go through tribulation. You're going to have to go to the book of Revelation. Okay. We'll end there. Now we'll hear from our Heavenly Father according to 1 Corinthians 14. Where it says, covet to prophesy and forbid not to speak in tongues. And so we're going to do as our Father said here, words of edification, exhortation, and comfort. Okay. So whoever is inspired to speak in tongues and interpret and prophesy, go ahead. My children, um, be happy, be rejoicing, be um, exalting, be um, joyful. Jump up and down praising me. It doesn't matter what the other people think because... They might be with me, but they'll be with me later, and they'll be with me less high. They'll be like the janitor. My children, you will be uh, my right hand, you will be the prince, like Daniel. On earth, you might be low and put down, but my children, with me, you can grow so high if I'm in you. People on earth will put you down as much as they can, but they cannot stand up to me. Amen. Amen. So do not be afraid of things in front of you. If you go into a dark forest, don't be afraid. For I am with you, I am there, be brave. For I have a seal, and that seal is me around you. So anything that's coming your way, I will protect you. My soldiers disbelieve in me, and I will protect you from anything. Amen. My, my children, do not be afraid of what other people think of you. Do not, I don't care what I don't care what they look like on the outside. I only care what they look on the inside. Remember, I don't care if people say say that if they make fun of you when you praise me. I don't care. One day, one day you you will go into heaven, and all of them will suffer. So, just don't try to. If if you if you want other people to like you, and how they like you is to not praise me. Like for them to like you, not to praise me, then don't be with them, because one day. You will go into heaven, but if you be with them, you will, you will stay in the ground and you will get plagued terribly. Amen. When you come to me and I, and you come to me with open arms, accepting me, accepting me and my son, I I love you for this, and I want I want to see you succeed. I want to see you have wonderful things, have just glorious, wonderful things, and give the glory to me so that I may give these things to others. 
my sons and daughters, <clears throat> come to me and, and take the authority that I have given to you, the, the, uh, the power that has been vested in you through my son, that you may be able to cast out, and, and when wild beasts are coming at you, that you will be able to speak against these things, and that even, even uh, as you look at your own body and, and see your flesh, and, and grade it against the things that come against you, that this is not how this works. That the authority that I give to you is a hundred year old man can wield this authority against a, a thousand pound uh, wild animal coming at him. So use the authority that I have given to you and know that as you stand there that, that I am with you as you walk in faith and I will bless you and uh, as, as, I, as I direct you that in your path that I will, I will steer you away from these things but when these things do come at you because of this world there is there is wickedness and when these things come that i call upon you to to stand against and and speak against these things and raise your staff against these things i have a word of prophecy for the viewers <clears throat> be strong and have good courage as i abide in my son i abide in you you are strengthened you have ex Exousia, which is authority and power, dunamis, that I have poured out upon you in order to exercise, in order to deliver people from the power of darkness, to deliver your own lives. So walk forth in that exorcism where you can take the dominion of the, that I've given you of this earth and of the things in front of you and over spiritual wickedness. So take the authority that I have given you and exercise it in order that my will will be done on earth as it is in heaven through you because you are my hands and my feet and my mouth. I have called each one of you to this day and this time and this very moment. And if you've been obedient, you are here. And if you are here, I am happy with you. I am blessed with you. When I tell you to read my word, I tell you this for your own good. It is food. When I tell you to pray perfectly and pray without ceasing, it is good. When I tell you to love your neighbor, it is good. Know that the things that I tell you to do and I tell you not to do are for your benefit. The end result being that I can take pride in my family, of which you are the center. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Christ, for being our Savior, and we are yours, and you are Yahweh. So through you we come to our Father. Amen. See you next week.